Welcome back. We were talking about outer space, and let's, let's take a step out of this world. And I was asking, I'm going to ask my guests, uh, what is the prospect of finding intelligent persons, people, or a species in the outer space with whom we could communicate? We could go for a six months holiday. Is it possible? Uh, he thinks it is because we are, we are improving things. Like I'm from uh, motor cars now, we have uh, aeroplanes, so things are improving. But how long will it take? And is there any possibility? Have we done any homework on that? <laughs> well, I think that's a question that uh, nobody can answer with certainty. Mm -hmm. So it's still going to be whether you believe or not. And I always like to wake up to an exciting future. So I would love to believe that, and I think I think there is a probability we can't say, but uh, that is going to require time. We need more time before we can actually do that, and obviously there is a probability that they might visit us. I right. mean, this is something that we can't really say, but um, but one would like to believe that. Uh, I think we often read about these flying saucers. Yes. Or UFOs, mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, there's any any scientific f I mean f fact or, or, or evidence or is just a hearsay? As far as I know, I don't have any good reason to believe that those are those are visitors from from outside. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, we don't know, um, mm -hmm. and probably I don't know uh, if if someone has sighted some of them or maybe. Um, met some of them, but I, I don't think it's so. It's like Loch Ness. <laughs> 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 Nobody has seen, but people go want yes, to see. Yes, yes, and, and you know, people want to believe things like that as well. Yes. So it's it's not. I think scientifically, we can't really justify that at all, as far as I know. But there are uh, uh, strange lights seen on on on, on certain nights. Uh, people say that. Uh, Somebody disappeared from the village and never came back, <laughs> and lifted by a flying saucer. Yes, yes. Well, well, there is also, I think, uh, bits uh, which are part of super t superstitions as well. Mm -hmm. So you'll always have these stories, and I think that's also funny. <laughs> uh, you spent uh, five days at AIAA Space in 2018. This year, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, what was your experience there? So that is uh, one of the largest uh, conferences uh, on space, mm -hmm. space sciences. So there were lots of scientists from NASA and the aerospace community worldwide. I met Buzz Aldrin there, so that was the absolute mm -hmm. highlight, of course, mm -hmm. and other astronauts as well. So uh, it's a huge gathering of, of aerospace engineers and scientists. An astronaut is a person who has gone into a space and yes, come back. Yes, yes. Yeah. They have uh, professional training. Yes. Uh, what does it ma take to become an astronaut? Oh, I think, I think there is no one answer mm -hmm. to that question. It can be of you know, various reasons and backgrounds. So one could be a medical doctor and still mm -hmm. be an astronaut. So it's really hard to tell. He has um, to be trained to be an astronaut. Isn't yes, so physically you have to be fit. Um, but there are lots of other, um, um, other points that are important. But it's really hard to tell what would make someone an astronaut. Um, if you look at their background, they have diverse yeah, uh, yes, yes, yes. backgrounds and experiences. So, uh, so there is really no one formula for, for how to become an astronaut, I'd say. I think I was visiting one of the universities in, in near Chicago. Was it Purdue? They said Purdue, that maybe. Yes. 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 But uh, a good number of uh, astronauts have gone on from here. Yes. Yeah, so a good number of astronauts would have aerospace engineering degrees, like Neil Armstrong had mm -hmm. from Purdue. Yes. Um, so that is a path, of course. But nonetheless, I think it's always hard to say uh, whether, because it's not an established career path, like you can study it and mm -hmm. be it. It's not like that. Um, and it's, of course, very competitive. Of course. 
Uh, what was your experience meeting uh, Buzz Aldrin? Oh, uh, he, 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 he doesn't talk much. Mm -hmm. That was my experience. <laughs> 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 and he doesn't like selfies, as far as I no, understand. No, 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 no. Apart from that, didn't you ask him what was, mm -hmm. what was his impression of it? I mean, no, he has gone over it many times. Yes, that. yes. But uh, didn't you ask him any questions? No, so, so that happens to him very often. So of we course. did not harass <laughs> him. And <laughs> 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 I think we are just glad to see him. Uh, right, right. Yes. Yeah. Did he deliver a lecture? Uh, no, he was just a, a special guest there. Mm -hmm. It's always mm -hmm. nice to have him, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess. Uh, do you know the work at NASA? I mean, uh, is that the, the biggest uh, space uh, research center th in the world? I think, um, of course, they're in the forefront of space mm -hmm. research. But space research is not, um, not a particular single field. It's, mm -hmm. it's a combination of different fields. And I think when we go to space, we're just looking at the same science or engineering that we do otherwise, but in the extremes. Like when you talk about temperatures, we're talking right. about extreme temperatures. Right. When we talk about radio signals, we're talking about extreme distances. So it's more about bringing the extremes, and that's what aerospace engineering is. It's just a collection of all the other fields, but we're looking at the extremes. And I think apart from NASA, we have ESA, European Space Agency, DLR, the German Aerospace mm -hmm. uh, Center, uh, JAXA, Japan uh, Aerospace uh, Exploration Agency, um, and, and lots of other university universities that are working on it as well. So I think it's a teamwork. You can't do rocket science without collaborating and working together, I believe. Rocket science, that's, that's <laughs> a phrase people use. They use that <laughs> very often, yes. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you think that uh, with so many, so many research agencies working here and mm -hmm. there, uh, there is a possibility that we will have uh, We've talked about it before, but there's a possibility that we will be in, if not near future, distant future, we will be founding our colonies in a space sea. And uh, are we getting any signals? I mean, people, you just mentioned signals. Are we mm -hmm. getting any signals from any of these planets that, uh, meaningful signals? Not that I know of, no. uh, but uh, you know my knowledge is limited. So if it could be, but not that I know of yeah. at the moment. We often read about such things, but they are mostly fiction. Yeah, they're mostly fiction. Yes, uh, yeah, not that I know of. No. So, <laughs> so when we will uh, go into outer space and we'll establish our colonies, uh, colony one, colony two, colony <laughs> three, so, you know, maybe it will be owned by this or that nation. Yes. Most likely who will be there first, mm -hmm. see. Don't you think that we will have to get used to the, the, the particular uh, atmosphere on that, the weather, the, the things available, because we are used to our water, mm -hmm. our food. Mm -hmm. Won't life be very difficult? So I think we're, if we think about the time scale of that, being a reality. Yeah. I think we're looking at a very long time. Mm -hmm. And if you see how human beings evolve, that's also very interesting science, I think. And, and that's also going to play into it. But I think in the near future, you're gonna, going to have small domes or malls where you can reside, like here. So it's right. a controlled, conditioned um, space where people might go or live. So mm -hmm. I think that's how it's going to start. And then you're going to probably slowly adopt and become probably a multi-planetary species. So it's going to require time. Mm -hmm. uh, the time scale scales are huge when you come, if, if you compare history, for example. Well, um, if, you, if, you, if you look at the time scale, huge time scale, you see, while the world is warming up Mm -hmm. at a greater speed than anything else. Mm -hmm. So are we prepared for that? Uh, global warming. <laughs> um, I think this is why we should explore, but I think it's never um, a good option to leave Earth uh, you know, entirely. I think this is our home yeah. and we should cherish it and work towards keeping it you know, as is. 
and and we will explore other places, but we're not going to abandon Give this place. Yet, no. So no. I think we should we should keep that in mind. And I think. Um, no, but are we? I mean, we keep that in mind. We talk yes. about it with p political statements mm -hmm. here and there. Mm -hmm. We have conferences, but uh, the, the the temperature is going up. Uh, we have this. Look at this weather. Mm -hmm. This. Mm -hmm. Very, very freak weather, freak snowfalls here yes. and there, uh, snowfalls in desert, and mm -hmm. we are beating our heads. Uh, yes, and, and it's going to be hard to stop because certain countries are also getting stronger in terms of the economy. They want cars, personal mm -hmm. cars, so you're burning more fossil fuel. So maybe going, you know, total re 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 uh, um, <laughs> Renewable energy, sorry about that. Yes, uh, okay. Renewable energy would be uh, a good idea, like using re. <laughs> Going electric? Yes. E electric, uh, so uh, I think entirely renew renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to uh, get rid of fossil fuel um, at all, so we're not going to use that at all. I think that's, that's the best bet that we can take for this moment. Well, there's some hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's but hope for the best. Yes, yes. because I keep worrying about uh, this uh, warming, and mm -hmm. we think about we are going to space, you see. But what about uh, back home? If we come back to <laughs> <laughs> a, a hot earth that is not uh, yes. very welcoming, you see. So we might have a stayed there out in Mars. What's your opinion about uh, this recent uh, uh, adventure at Mars? Oh, I think it's uh, it's a huge milestone for us as mm -hmm. human beings. Um, what did we learn? Uh, it's a lo long journey, but very short to stay. Uh, yes, so I think we're going to learn more. We're going to get more data out of it. So it, we need to be patient, but it's still good that we can at least go there, at least send something and do a proper Mars re-entry. I think that's very... Uh, um, very important to achieve first um, because re-entry into any atmosphere it could be Mars atmosphere, it could yeah. be Earth's atmosphere, it's very challenging so actually being able to do that I think is is a huge milestone mm -hmm. and it's all incremental and you take one complexity at a time so you'd send an object or some test um, some testing tools out there uh, without, you know, it's, it's going to be unmanned without mm -hmm. human beings and then you s one at a time you're going to step up the game and at some point we're going to have a manned mission. But every mission we do, we get more data, we understand the physics and the situation of these uh, flights. So I think it's very important that we keep doing it. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, what do you think of, uh, I mean, have we uh, achieved uh, mm -hmm. anything out of our trips to moon? I mean, people don't talk about moon anymore. Yes, um, so <laughs> we don't, currently we don't have a rocket to go mm. all the way to moon. But it's still... But uh, did we? Yeah, There's a lot the of Saturn V that. was the biggest rocket we ever had. And we don't have a rocket comparable to that mm -hmm. at the moment. And therefore we can't go to moon yet again. So um, I think, um, you know, it's when the moon race happened, it was rather coming from a political side, but mm -hmm. now we're actually going out there to explore. It's actually coming from a scientific interest uh, than anything else. And we're working together globally, and I think that's what's important about today's space research. Um, and I, I think we will go to moon again uh, in, in the near future. Inshallah, one day, yeah. as the song goes, one way ticket to the moon. <laughs> yes. Well. Hassan Sadifti, it was a pleasure having you Thanks on the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you very pleasure. much. Thank it's you so it's much. It's great to have you here and that you travel all the way from Oxford to... Thank you. <laughs> Hassan Saad uh, is doing his DSc at uh, Oxford University. He is a Rolls Royce scholar and uh, he is working on uh, hypersonic... Hypersonic... Uh, Hypersonic vehicles, yes. Hypersonic vehicles. Yes. We hope that you've enjoyed the show as much as we have and we all dream, dream one day that we'll be able to travel to the moon, travel to Mars, and find our own home there. We have lived through these periods, and we have. Well, if we don't dream, we won't get to anywhere. From Thunderbirds to outer space. Thank you very much.
for being with us. Same time, same channel next week.